Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening um, for all the folks joining us today for our next installation of the Build Your AutoCAD IQ uh, webinar series. My name is Alex Benga, and I will be co-presenting with my colleague Ashley Luce. Um, this webinar introducing the customization features within AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT uh, 2018. Um, we're thankful for you folks joining us today. We do know that um, a lot of you are, um, a lot of your coworkers or colleagues may be at Autodesk University at this time, so um, we're thankful to have you here. To give you a further in introduction, um, kind of have a slide here. Uh, Ashley Luce, who is a technical support specialist out of the Boston office. Um, I, Alex Pena, a technical support specialist out of the Boston office as well. And Bryce Sutton, who would be uh, moderating along with us, he will be monitoring the chats, um, answering hopefully any questions you folks may have. Um, this is, I think, the first time we've had both presenters coming out of the same office, so hopefully it, it uh, proceeds a nice, calm, and smooth uh, webinar. Um, as I did mention, uh, feel free to leave any questions in the chat window. Um, we'll answer as time allows. Um, normally, as these uh, kind of go through, we will have time at the end to answer any questions that, uh, in a sense, were uh, answered in the chat window, or if uh, anything comes up at the end that might be of interest. Um, a lot of times, we'll try our best to reach out to you. If we can't um, answer it on the spot, we can definitely try to get back to you um, through our email alias. Um, these sessions will be recorded. Um, as they always are. Uh, the links are always available in the registration reminder email, the post-webinar survey, or in the chat window. Um, you can always check into our YouTube channel where um, we'd like to upload all of these videos for your um, viewing pleasures. You can um, visit them as often as you'd like, and uh, feel free to share them with any of your colleagues if it seems like something they might um, benefit from. Now to kind of go through a few um, of the upcoming webinars, we are wrapping up our year here and uh, have two on the docket um, remaining. December 14, 2017, we're hoping to get a 3D modeling and rendering webinar. And then January 18th, our um, AutoCAD for Mac uh, kind of release and um, presentation along with features and uh, new things for all of our Mac users. One thing that I do want to mention to you folks is that um, there's a chance that these two get switched around depending on the availability of our Mac specialists. Um, if it kind of becomes advantageous to do the December 14th deadline, um, and we might switch these around, but you will receive a, an uh, email with an update as to which one you're um, kind of uh, expecting to see. That way uh, you do have that. Uh, you can prepare accordingly on your end. Um, you can always watch these, as I mentioned, on our webinar playlist on YouTube. And uh, there's a bunch of great ones there already pre-recorded. Um, a lot of times we kind of urge folks to go in there beforehand and try to check out if there's anything that might uh, help them out if they're trying to learn customization. There's basically anything from A to Z in there as far as anything you can want to learn about AutoCAD. Um, as always, we like to supply some helpful links for folks. Um, uh, this is an introduction to customization within um, AutoCAD, so we're expecting some uh, newer users. And uh, with that being said, we always like to supply information as to how they can get started, um, where they can find the resources to help themselves. Um, uh, we at Technical Support do love helping folks, but um, there's a chance where they can, in a sense, help themselves and find the information. Um, we would prefer that as well. Um, so we like to create content, and these are a bunch of the links that um, you can kind of go through and um, figure stuff out um, before uh, approaching us. And on today's agenda, it seems to be a decent amount of things. Um, we're kind of trying to delve into as many different topics when it comes to customization and kind of open the eyes for folks um, as different things that they can accomplish to make their, um, their workflows more efficient, more ergonomic in a sense. Um, workspaces, uh, we'll go into the what are workspaces, managing them, um, creating custom workspaces, transferring them. If um, folks have a, a, an advantageous kind of workspace they want to share with a coworker, this will kind of show them how to do that. We'll also go into scripts, how to load them, uh, command aliases, customizing with Exchange apps, data extraction with Excel, and uh, kind of the one of the more important topics which uh, kind of gets overseen, resetting and backing up and importing settings. Um, as you're doing a bunch of customization, there's always an instance where something goes wrong or unexpected, and um, 
as opposed to Canakin. We want to make sure you folks are prepared for how to deal with that. Um, in, in a sense, backing up the settings, getting your program back up and running, and then seeing how you can uh, mitigate any issues um, is our goal for today. Before we get started and kind of start seeing some of the stuff in AutoCAD, I'd just like to uh, go ahead and select some polls here to see what kind of audience we have. Um, and the first poll we'll launch now is how is this your first Autodesk help webinar? I'd like to see if um, we have some uh, opening users and some users that have been here often. Or and I'll let you guys continue voting in here until I get a around 100% voted. So it's looking like about 92% have been here before for the 9% that this is your 8 to 9% here. We'll close this one out. I'll share it. Uh, for the first 9% here that haven't attended one, welcome to the webinar series. Hopefully you can learn some new things um, that that will help you uh, kind of with your workflows. Um, it, it is good to see that folks are, are coming back, so I think that we're not scaring them away. As, <laughs> as that's, a, that's a positive sign. I'll do a couple more just to try to see here. Um, this one, I just kind of want to see what folks are using as far as uh, different applications of AutoCAD, um, whether uh, it's a mostly Windows version or AutoCAD for Mac folks. Um, as I mentioned, we do like to try to get into webinars for the AutoCAD for Mac folks as, um, as oftentimes this, this webinar series is geared toward the Windows versions. Um, the AutoCAD for Mac will kind of go into a, a deep dive in most instances when we do uh, create that webinar. And so we're looking at a mostly AutoCAD for Windows, AutoCAD LT for Windows uh, audience, um, which kind of this webinar will be perfectly geared toward. Um, if there are any instances where commands or certain features aren't included, in the LT version of AutoCAD, we will be sure to remind you um, of that. Uh, just most of the times we do try to create things that um, are compatible between both versions, but in some instances that's not possible, so I uh, just kind of let you know. We'll have that one here and just have one more. Do you currently use uh, workspaces when you're working in AutoCAD? So it looks like this is uh, closer to a split decision than I expected. Let's see, about 81% of folks have voted. Let's leave it open for a little bit longer. Alrighty, so we got about 58% say no, 42% uh, say yes. Now, um, this is actually just a trick poll that I wanted to throw in there. Um, it, theoretically, uh, in, in most instances, um, folks are always using workspaces when they're working in AutoCAD. Um, it may not, in a sense, be a customized one, one where folks have gone in and changed around any of the toolbar um, or ribbon or any of the commands around. But uh, just like with Layer 0, um, you need something to draw on. And uh, by default, AutoCAD will actually uh, prompt you the default workspace, which we'll um, get into now. So I'll hide that. And what we can do is see this in AutoCAD now. Now, uh, Ashley, are we able to see my screen right now? Or, and let me know if you can see that. Now we're all set. So um, what, what I wanted to kind of show you folks is, um, as uh, mentioned before, we'll get into the beginning of workspaces. Workspaces are sets of menus, uh, toolbars, palettes, and ribbon control panels that are grouped and organized so that you can work in a custom task-oriented environment. Um, as many folks know, you kind of go in here, you get the AutoCAD co uh, core you just downloaded, and this is, in a sense, what it looks like. Um, a lot of folks like to move these around depending on when they started using AutoCAD. Um, one way might be more comfortable for them than another. Um, so when it comes to drafting, everyone does have their own setup that they prefer, and this is kind of just going into different ways where you can manipulate that setup. Um, and workspaces are a great way to kind of separate tools if you're in a 2D environment or you're drafting in 2D and um, you're preferring to uh, do that, you can use tools that are going to be just for 2D. Um, once you're moving into 3D, there's separate tools that are going to be used so you can have a separate workspace so that way you can separate and have a less cluttered environment. 
So the first thing that uh, most folks would like to know is how do you even find what workspace you're in? How do you switch to different workspaces? And the first place is right here in the top left-hand corner in the drop-down arrow of your quick access toolbar. Um, if you click here, you have your prompted with options. Everything that is checked actually is currently displayed as an icon up top here. Um, what we want to check on is workspace. Once you see this, it'll basically mention the drafting and annotation toolbar uh, workspace. And this is the one that comes default with AutoCAD LT. Uh, I'm using LT uh, 2018 for a reason um, that we'll get into a little bit further just to show the um, differences between LT and AutoCAD when it comes to workspaces. But um, here you, you'll be able to notice that uh, you have your drafting and annotation and uh, you have a few other settings that we can go to. The bottom right hand side as well, you'll be able to access this um, workspace uh, settings dialog. And if what you want to look for is a gear that is displayed here. Um, by default, the gear should be displayed. I've gone through and removed it just to let you know, um, folks know if you're ever in an instance where you're looking for it and you can't see it here, you just click on the bottom right hand corner on the customization uh, icon. And this, again, whatever is checked off will be displayed down here with an icon. Um, what we want to do is make sure workspace switching is on. And there we have our gear. Um, what it does, it just basically represents the exact same information in a different area. Um, some folks would prefer to have it up here, some down here. Um, if you did want it to display the name of the workspace, if you have multiple spaces, want to make sure you're in the correct one, you can always click on display, display workspace label. So um, this is a really a cool way to kind of switch between different areas and very quick and easy to kind of get into. Um, to kind of see what we have available to us, what we can do is actually go in here into the workspace settings, which brings up the uh, dialog box. Um, if you have multiple spaces, they will all display here in this dropdown. We currently only have one. Um, one thing that I kind of like to stress to folks, uh, we here at Tent Technical Support see a lot of um, cases where folks will come in and say, I've changed around my toolbars. I want my palette to be here. I want my uh, uh, tool palette to be on the other side. But every time I exit out of the program and relaunch it, everything's missing. Um, this is where uh, you can click on this automatically save workspace changes. What this does is any changes that you make to your environment um, as to what you're working in will be automatically saved. And from there, um, you shouldn't have any issues as to um, relaunching and exiting out of the program. If something happens unexpectedly, um, all your changes will be saved. Uh, this is personally one of the, the first things I like to do. Um, just because uh, I don't like to have to do multiple uh, steps of the, of the same thing just to try to get this to work. Um, there are instances where some folks, uh, where this might not be advantageous if you're using any type of public environment um, where, say, a computer lab or some sort, you don't want to save all the changes and kind of mess the next person up. But this is for right now, we'll hit OK. And um, any changes that we make now uh, should be saved. Now, um, when, when you want to start setting up, you just want to think of the, the uh, commands that we, we're going to be using often. If you're drafting and you use move, copy, uh, mirror, or rotate often, you want to make sure that that's readily available for yourself as um, this is kind of what we want to do is set it up so anything that's extra isn't really needed. And um, just what we need for the workspace itself is uh, what we'd want. So what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll move this guy here. I just want to be able to grab the modify. I'll grab the, the layers palette and move it down here. Uh, we'll grab up some utilities, exit out of the properties. Don't really need that right now. I want some more space to be able to draft. And we'll move this around. Um, now, for me, this, this would work, and um, this is what I prefer to do. What I can do is just click on this drop down again and save current as. What this allows me to do is save this work workspace as it is and give it a name. So now I'll be able to toggle between the default one that was uh, prompted to me by AutoCAD LT and um, the one that I just created. I'll call this one sample test one. So now you'll see that uh, I have it in my drop down, And I can actually switch between these at any point. If I go to drafting and annotation, it's back to my default. If I go to uh, sample test one, it is exactly where, where I want everything to be. And this is, again, pretty convenient if you're doing any type of uh, task-based 
based uh, work. Um, if you have folks from different departments, I may have different blocks, or if you uh, do one thing uh, for an extended amount of time, but now you're switching over, um, you can have different workspaces. That way you don't have to necessarily um, clog up or clutter up one over the other. Now, if um, another thing that you can do is um, if you did want to, for example, add certain things onto a workspace that's already been created, um, I can go through here and add this, remove this, and um, if I wanted to just save over this initial one, I would use the save current as again, use the sample test, and what it's going to prompt me is um, there's already an existing one. Um, do I want to replace it? All I want to do is hit replace. And um, from there, now, this has been completely updated to the, what I currently need, in a sense. Now, uh, the drop-downs are a good way to be able to manipulate a lot of these workspaces. There's also another way where we can kind of create workspaces and uh, kind of edit them and overwrite them or do whatever we need. And that's using the customized user interface dialog box. And the way that I would access this, I can either go to the uh, Manage tab and hit the User Interface here, and it prompts me with this sometimes intimidating dialog box for folks, or I can just, um, on the command line, type in CUI and hit Enter. One thing that I do like to kind of stress, in a sense, for this, um, most instances in this dialog box, anything on the left will be things that you're actually working on. Um, so the edits will be made here, and then the representation of the edits will be placed here. Um, that's kind of the easiest way to read it. Um, you do have commands here, and, and we do have webinars that kind of go in through how to create commands, so I won't necessarily be going into that. Um, we do have some that will kind of show you how these macros are created, so you can go through and create your own um, kind of the explanation of the, uh, each one of these um, symbols. But, um, for now, we'll just kind of stay here in the AutoCAD LT, get familiar with the dialog box. And um, what we want to do in order to try to see if we can manipulate this is right-click on the workspace, and this will allow us to create a new one, similar to how we created a new one over here. And we'll call this one yep, test2. And from here, what you can see is um, if I were to basically click on this and expand any of these toolbars or palettes, or it'll let me know what exactly is uh, represented in this particular workspace. If I look at my new one, it's very limited as to the information that it's currently on it. Uh, it has some palettes that come to fall with the program, but um, other than that, it, it's, it's as bare minimum as it gets. What I want to do is this, um, this sample test too. I want to customize the workspace. Um, when, once you click on that, you'll notice that each one of these becomes blue. That means that you're currently in the edit process. Um, from here, you'll be able to edit any of these or um, add on, uh, in a sense, to this workspace. Uh, what we can do is um, start expanding some of these trees. And what you'll notice is there's a little checkbox next to each one of these. And I can go through toolbars. I can go through ribbons. And um, it'll separate into tabs. And from here, I'm able to basically select exactly what I want in this workspace. It doesn't have to be more or less. If I want layouts, if I want the uh, viewports, we'll just click on some random ones here. Notice how each one of them gets filed correctly right underneath each one of the categories it corresponds to. If I want the file, edit, menus, if I want the... Once I'm done editing, uh, I can actually see what the results are. So in the toolbars, I have these menus. I have the file edit and view. And um, one, once I'm able to see this, uh, I can actually go through if I'm completely comfortable with what I'm seeing and what I want to actually be displayed, I can hit done. You notice everything goes back to black. And from there, the, uh, the workspace has been completed. What I can do is hit apply and OK. And if I go back into here, I will have it as one of my available dropdowns. If I click Sample Test 2, it'll just display exactly what I clicked on the uh, CUI editor. Now, um, in some instances, folks will come in here and notice, like, I've lost most of my things. I don't know how to get it back. Uh, one thing that you can always do is click on here. And um, again, you, this is your quick access toolbar. You can always go back here to Workspace. 
and uh, choose between the different options if you want to go back to the default one. So that's a really cool way to kind of um, edit your own uh, ribbon and your own toolbar and have it just as you want it. Uh, very quick and easy. It doesn't necessarily take a lot of time, um, but uh, very good to know. Um, one thing that I always do like to stress to folks is once you're in here, uh, another cool little trick that uh, some folks uh, may not know is if they, for example, lost the palette. And this has not necessarily do with workspaces, but something good to know. Uh, a lot of times people are like, I can't find my uh, properties palette or I can't find my uh, tool palette. Um, if it's off the screen and you can't access it, you can always actually go in here and um, mess around with the properties of it. So all I did was click on the drafting and annotation uh, default uh, current layout right now workspace. And what I'll do is navigate to the palette and click on properties. What you'll notice here is that um, you have a few different options as to uh, as to where it'll uh, orientate once the program starts or right now on, on, on the moment. So what I do is click uh, allow for docking. This is allows us to put it on either side of the screen. Um, the orientation will be on the left side. And what I want to do is hit show for us. We'll hit auto hide. Uh, this is, we'll leave that on. And so what this does allows us to basically choose where the property palette will show up when um, it could be off the screen for whatever reason. It could be uh, where, wherever in space where you can't find it and for some reason you can't find it and it's, and it's gone. So once I do that, I, all I did was make sure that it's shown, allow for docking. Um, you can do auto hide on or off. Um, if I do it off, it'll just display. Um, but once I hit OK, you'll notice that the properties palette is now here where it wasn't previously um, on the screen. So just a quick little trick that um, a lot of folks can kind of solve a, an issue that they may have. And now what we want to do is, um, now that we have these different spaces and um, uh, these are customized to exactly how we want them to be, um, you would like to, in a sense, share them or um, transfer them somebody, one of your colleagues. And uh, the way that we would do this is by typing in CUI again, coming into the customized user interface. And on the transfer tab here, Notice how there's two uh, sides again. The left side is the current space or uh, customization file that I have open, this AutoCAD LT.CUIX. Um, it has all three spaces that I've created. And on the right side, we have a chance where we can either um, already create a new file or we can search for one. And what I want to do is actually search for, uh, for example, someone sends me the AutoCAD customization file. So what I'll do is open up the AutoCAD 2018, not AutoCAD LT. And from here, it's going to give me three different workspaces. And, and the good thing about this and transferring it over, you get the CUIX file from somebody, and all you got to do is just navigate to where you have it saved, and it'll, it'll open up all these different workspaces for you. It'll have the uh, 3D modeling and 3D basics. Okay, honestly, 3D modeling sounds pretty awesome. All I have to do is drag and drop it here, and now I have that part of my workspace. This is part of my uh, current workspace here in AutoCAD LT. I can set it as a current um, workspace. I hit apply. And what I want to do is now see what I actually received from the AutoCAD. What we end up seeing is a kind of a, a, a limitation and something that I, I like to let folks know about. Um, a lot of times we'll have folks that come in and they want to uh, import a tool palette that they received from somebody else. and um, they're assuming that the tool palette was created in AutoCAD. Um, in some instances, it, depending on what program you're using or what customization file was it created in, uh, you may not have access to those commands. For example, the 3D modeling commands are coming in as question marks within AutoCAD LT because they're not available. It's not compatible with the program. These are features that aren't included in LT, so I won't be able to access them. Um, some instances, folks have uh, palettes that were created in Civil 3D. Um, for example, and they're expecting to have now surface features within AutoCAD. Um, it, it's not going to work that way. You're still going to have the limitations of the program you're using, but um, it is something to keep in mind if you have folks who are working on the verticals of the program, um, things like Plan 3D or Civil 3D, um, just to make sure that anything that you're trying to import is actually from the program itself. So we'll go back and switch this here. Uh, Uh, 
Um, and just to kind of close up on, on the uh, actual workspaces, the one thing that I do want to remind the folks is um, kind of bringing in older CUIX files. Um, a lot of folks will say, hey, uh, uh, I'm basically coming in and uh, I want to import a CUIX file from an older version of the program or one that I've been using forever. Um, it's definitely possible to do with the program. The one thing that I would recommend is uh, if you're capable of, of keeping the program installed on the machine, transferring it will be a lot easier than um, trying to uh, do this uh, from somebody else's machine or some sort. Um, if you're capable of, uh, say, in a sense, keeping the 2017 version, um, and it's good practice, in a sense, uh, either A, export your settings, um, so you do have those available to yourself, export all custom settings before you upgrade, make sure you have them available on a, on a different location, so that if you do decide to de uh, delete the program before upgrading, um, you still have access to those files. If not, it, it, there's no problem with having the 2017 version of AutoCAD installed and um, then downloading the 2018 uh, as you will be prompted once you start the 2018 version to migrate all your files from the previous version. Um, this is very advantageous just because you don't actually have to do any of the work yourself. Um, all you have to do is install the newer version, uh, migrate all the settings, and then from there, um, It'll just be uh, all the all all the settings done for you. So um, one thing that just as a, a note in a sense to make sure to keep that uh, new version of the program installed, the older version of the program installed. But um, uh, that's what I have right here for workspaces. What I can do now is switch it over to Ashley, um, and she'll kind of kind of go through the rest of the um, agenda for us. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Can you hear me okay? Yep, can hear you great. All right. I'm going to make myself the presenter. Let me know when you can see me okay. Uh, I can see. It. Okay. okay, all right, perfect. So um, the first thing that I'm going to go over is a little bit about uh, scripting. Maybe some of you are familiar with it, you use it often, or you've never even heard of it. So, um, so what is a script? A script is basically a piece of code that can be used to help automate some tasks in AutoCAD. So you can create a script outside of AutoCAD using a text editor. So for example, um, I. I have a window, so I'm going to use um, Notepad or um, there are other programs. Another one is called Atom. And I believe if you're using a Mac, you can use a text edit. Maybe I may be wrong, but I believe you can use text edit if you're using a Mac. So just as an example, um, here I have Notepad++, and here's just an example of a simple script. Um, to run the script in AutoCAD is, is very, very easy. So the script that I'm going to run is going to create a classic workspace. So to, to run a script, um, all you have to do is type in script, and then that's going to prompt you to, um, to open up the actual script. So one thing that's important is that um, whenever you write a script, the file extension has to be .scr. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and then you'll see now that I have a classic workspace so and as Alex just mentioned um, you can all about customizing workspaces I'm going to go back to the drafting and annotation one for now but that's how you can um, that's how you can load a script um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about are command aliases and what a command alias is is it's basically an abbreviation of a command name so instead of typing the entire command out you can just type in part of the name or um, you know one letter so for example um, instead of typing uh, the command circle I can just type in C and then that'll prompt me to uh, to create a circle. Um, so what we can do is if we want to, to change the uh, command aliases, we can go into the Manage tab. And then in the Customization panel, here we have Edit Aliases. So we're going to select Edit Aliases. And so this, is, um, this new window is going to appear. And I'm just, I know what I'm trying to find, but I'm not exactly sure where it is in the, um, in the window. So I'm just going to use Control F. And I want to change the, um, the copy command. So I'm just going to move this here. Okay. So right now the copy command is CO. So I'm going to change it to CPY. And then I'm going to close this. And then if I type in CPY, 
and then I can move that. So you can very easily change um, the command aliases using that. And you can do it in both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. You can do it in both. I believe though in the light version, um, it may be a different panel. I'm not sure about that, but in the full version, you would go into manage and then the customization panel and edit aliases. Um, you can also, uh, another way you can customize AutoCAD is by using Exchange apps. And what they do is Exchange apps provide additional functionality within AutoCAD. So if you go to the um, featured apps and then you click on connect to App Store, what that's going to do is that's going to connect you directly to the App Store. And here you can select the product that you're using. So I'm using AutoCAD, but you can also select Maya, Inventor, 3ds Max, uh, Civil 3D, whichever product that you're, that you're using. And they have both um, free apps and then uh, apps that you pay for as well. Um, so now one of my actually favorite parts is um, using, uh, I will show you here, data extraction tables uh, with Excel tables. So on my screen here, you can see that I have a um, set of bolts and I've added a, um, a grade. So what we're going to do is, what I have here is an Excel file with um, just a little bit of information here about specific that I'm using in my drawing. So AutoCAD has a really excellent tool to help you link the information in the Excel file with the information in your AutoCAD drawing. So if we go back to AutoCAD, here I have, um, I've added a, I've created a bolt um, as a block and then added the grade attribute. So I have A325, A307, DIN603, and um, I've just made the grade, I've added the grade that um, I've had the same grade and then I've added a different grade. So um, if we go into the insert tab and then we go over to the linking and extraction panel um, and we click on data extraction, what that's going to do is that's going to open up a wizard. And the really great thing about the wizard is that it's pretty intuitive and you can always go back to the previous step if you made a mistake or if you need to change something. So when I click on this, it's going to open up, there's eight steps in the in the wizard. So this is the first step. And in the first step, um, we're going to select the option create a new data extraction. So if we click next, uh, what that's going to do is we're going to name our we're going to name our list. So I'm going to call it um, bolt list. I'm going to click save, and then what that's going to do is that's going to take us to the second step in the um, the data extraction wizard. Now in this example, we're only going to use a single drawing, the drawing that I have here, but you can also add. Um, multiple drawings, or um, you can add all the drawings in a, in a single folder. So it's really helpful in that way. Um, but again, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to use the, the one drawing for now. So when we click Next, what that's going to do is it's going to scan through our, um, our drawing. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, this option, Display Blocks with Attributes Only, and then I'm just going gonna, gonna to leave this one selected here. And then I'm going to click next. Now here I'm going to. I have a lot of um, data fields, so the only one that I want right now is grade. So I'm actually going to deselect grade. And I know this may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but there is a method to the madness. Um, so if I right click on grade and I select invert selection, that's actually going to deselect all the fields that I don't need and just leave the one that I do need selected. So I'm going to click Next. So as you can see, it's gone through the drawing and found that um, with a grade of DIN 603, I have one instance of that. Um, with a grade of A307, I have one instance of that in the drawing. And then with a grade of A325, I have two instances of that in the drawing. Now I'm also going to click on the grade header just so that I can sort it by that. And then um, what we're going to do is before we go to the next step, this is really important to click on link external data. And what that's going to do is we're going to create a new link to our Excel spreadsheet. So to do that, we're going to click on this icon here. 
it's the um, data link manager and we're going to create a new Excel data link and I'm going to call that bold list and then we'll click OK and then we're going to browse for our Excel file that I showed you earlier. We're going to click on that and then what that's going to do is in the bottom here it's going to give us a preview of our um, of our table. So once we've done this, I'll click OK, and we have that selected, so we'll click OK again. And then in this part, um, what we're going to do is we have two sections here. So we have the drawing data column, and we have the external data column. Now in both, I'm going to select uh, grade. Um, because this is the name of the um, block attribute inside of my drawing, so I just want to make sure that they match. And you can verify that by selecting check match. The key pairing was successful, so that's okay. And then we're going to click okay there. And so now, once we've done that, you can see that all the data that we have listed is now in the um, is now in the preview that we have here. So I'm going to go to. Um, I'm going to go to next and then in this part I'm going to select the option insert data extraction table into the drawing and we'll go to next and then here we're just going to enter a title for our table so again I'm going to call it bolt list and we'll go to next so now it's going to it's going to let me add this um, this bolt list here um, now, so, sorry about that, okay. Um, so here we have our bolt list. Um, well, one thing we can also do is, let's say that we wanted to add another, another bolt in here. So I'll do insert, we'll add another one, we'll call this one A325, okay. Now I have, so, in, so right now I currently have two instances of A35, although in the drawing I now have three instances. So the, the, the table is not dynamic in the sense that it will update right away when you add a new um, bolt. So what I can do is if we, if we click on the table here and we right click and we select update table data links, what that's going to do is that's going to update the table so we now have the correct number of bolts um, that are in the drawing actually reflected in the um, in the table. So I think that's a really a really handy feature. And if you have, I know I only had a little bit of data here, but if you have a lot of data, it can really be um, a huge huge time saver. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you quickly. And Alex had mentioned this before when you you know when you have a lot of um, customized settings. Um, sometimes there can be oddities and, and things that don't go quite right. So in these cases, um, it can really be helpful to, uh, to reset AutoCAD to defaults. But if you have a lot of customized settings, you want to make sure that you keep those all the time that you've spent working on those, that you don't lose them. You're able to, um, you're able to preserve them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close, close down this. So on our um, in in Windows, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to all programs, and we're going to go into the Autodesk folder. Okay. So if we click on the AutoCAD 2017 folder, down here there's an option reset settings to default. So you're going to click on that option. Now this is the really important part. So before you actually reset your settings to default, you have uh, two options. The first option is to back up and reset custom settings, which will create a zip file. Um, you can you know, save it on your desktop or wherever you want to, or to reset custom settings. Now if you select reset custom settings, that's going to completely, um, well you won't have any more custom settings if you, if you select that option. So for now, um, I'll select the first one, which will create a zip file. So I'm just going to save it to my desktop and we'll save that. And then AutoCAD will do its thing and it will reset. So then you'll receive a notice that says your, your custom files have been backed up and saved. Uh, so we'll click OK. And then AutoCAD will, will um, reopen automatically. Um, and then to re-import our, our custom settings, we'll, we'll do that now.
So I'm just going to wait for this to open and close it. And if we go back into all programs and we select Autodesk, AutoCAD 2017, migrate custom settings, and then import, you have a couple of options, export AutoCAD settings, import AutoCAD settings. We want to import our settings and then we want to select our, our zip file that was created and then that's going to automatically um, uh, import our custom settings that we had. So you're not going to lose your, your settings as long as you select that option to back up and, and reset your, your custom settings. So Alex, that's about all I have. Alrighty, um, thank you Ashley. Uh, what, what I do want to kind of mention and kind of uh, follow back with folks is that um, we did mention that if, if a feature wasn't available within the AutoCAD LT, um, we would, uh, in a sense, kind of let you know. Uh, the edit aliases, and uh, let me just kind of present my screen here, and I can kind of follow back up with some of the things that I actually did here, just to let folks know um, what, where they can find this stuff. And just getting this here. Alrighty. So um, the edit aliases in AutoCAD LT is in the same spot as it is in AutoCAD. Um, it is under the Manage tab. You're able to um, kind of go through here and add, add it in just as she did. Um, the dialog box is actually on the other screen. As far as the um, kind of link into the Exchange apps that isn't available in LT, as you'll notice here, you don't have that Featured Apps feature um, or tab, I should say. Um, so that's one thing that you folks definitely want to keep in mind. And um, I think that we have a question in regards to the full data extraction within um, LT. And yeah, I saw that. I saw that question as well. So no, and unfortunately, um, you can't do the full data extraction in LT. That is only available in the in the full version. But I know that there are um, there are a couple of workarounds that you can do. Um, I was working with someone the other day, and I there are a couple of um, links and videos that I sent him so if you can just um, put your your email address in there I can definitely email those to you because I don't remember the workflow off the top of my head but there is a way to um, to do that and um, as always we like to kind of supply some additional resources after the webinar has been completed and um, this information is uh, anything for system requirements I'm downloading AutoCAD 2018 uh, I don't know how many folks are actually um, working on the, the latest and greatest version of the program, but um, it is pretty uh, intuitive. There have been a few updates already released for it, so one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and if we have um, any feedback for us as far as things that you would like to be covered, um, as the year is closing, we always like to kind of get a customer's perspective on different topics that they would like to be covered. Um, we, over the time, have, have come through as many things as you could possibly think of, and that's why we usually like to encourage folks to um, head to our uh, YouTube uh, playlist as it has uh, basically anything you can think of from customizing macros and creating your own uh, commands to uh, editing AutoCAD to be um, anything you would like it to be and more, um, writing, writing custom scripts for it, um, using uh, list files, um, anything you can think of that you in a sense you want to expand or want to learn about um, it has been done, but if there is something that you see they would really like us to look into. We um, we love the feedback, and any recommendations would be appreciated. Um, as uh, shown here, you can email us directly on our uh, email alias. And uh, if you could just include in the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ, it would be appreciated. It just helps us kind of filter out the, the uh, emails from where they need to get to and who the proper person to respond would be. Um, and if we don't uh, have any questions, we could definitely try to uh, look into any of them. I don't know if there's any on the on the chat right now, uh, Bryce or Ash. It seems uh, we have one question here. Um, can you explain where to find the fun F key functionality like F3O snap on off? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if they could clarify exactly what they're what they're meaning. Alex, I'll, um, 
if you want to do that one, I'll go back. Someone had a question about how to um, how to change the the oh, one of the command aliases. Yeah, so I can um, I can make my let me see. I can make myself the presenter, and and I can show how to do that again. I'm not sure the other question about the the snap, but let me do. Let me just open up AutoCAD again. Can you see my screen? Okay. Um, yep. Okay. Okay. So to for the um, for the command aliases. So so I'm using the the full version of AutoCAD. So you'd go into the into the manage uh, tab, and then it's on the customization panel, and then you'd go into edit aliases. And so I'll just use the the copy command again. So. Okay, so here's the here's the command, and then here's the here's what I changed. So if I want to change it back to co, I type in co, and then just save that, and then um, here, let me just do this. Okay, and then if we type in co, that's again the copy command. So. So that's how you change. You just go into the Manage tab, Customization Panel, and Edit Aliases. I hope that I hope that answered your question. Alrighty. So it looks like um, there was somebody here who was asking if uh, how do you go back to the original command alias? Um, the, I mentioned if you reset to defaults, all the command aliases will default or revert back to the original one. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any other questions that we haven't answered. Uh, I see someone requested they want to see the slide again. I will kind of present that right now. So um, you can see the top, talking points. And Ashley, can you see the slides right now? Yeah, I can see your, I can see the slides. Alrighty, so these were these were the talking points we kind of discussed today um, about different workspaces, managing them, um, all the different things you can do. Um, well, we will uh, be uploading this uh, uh, webinar very shortly um, to our playlist. So actually, well, what you can do is um, you check in about in our playlist about 30 minutes or so. This one will be updated, and um, from there uh, well, you can actually kind of follow through. Again, any feedback is appreciated, folks. And what I will be doing is signing off now. But um, thank you so much for joining in today. We definitely uh, appreciate your company and look forward to seeing you folks uh, next time. Thank you.